Let's see if an American can make the Italian classic for his first time, bolognese sauce. Any Nona's out there, please critique. Why am I making bolognese sauce? Because I have a toddler and I try to hide vegetables in everything. Make sure you subscribe because we're taking on homemade dumplings soon. Where does bolognese sauce come from and why is it an Italian classic? It originated from the beautiful city of Bologna and is one of the quintessential meat-based sauces of Italian cuisine. Earliest documented recipes date back to the late 18th century, so we're gonna try to respect and honor that tradition today. And we'll be attempting that by making a variation of Marcella Hazan's recipe, which I pulled from the New York Times. I'll highlight my modifications and see the link in the episode description for my full recipe. First, let's prep our ingredients. The recipe calls for half a cup chopped onion, but I only have shallots. That's fine though because I prefer their delicate sweetness. Next, carrots and celery, two thirds a cup of each. Make sure to throw out the ends for both the celery and the carrots. And before someone critiques my carrot chopping, I know I should be cutting them in matchsticks and then dicing, but I'm doing it this way because, well, I like it and these babies will simmer for three plus hours in the bolognese anyways. Although, let's be real, I should have just used a food processor. If you have one, use it. Let's fire this up now. Add one tablespoon vegetable oil into a big pot. I use extra virgin olive oil. Costco, baby. Three tablespoons of butter. Keep the heat on medium, and then once the butter is dissolved, add your chopped onions, or if you're cool like me, shallots. Add the chopped celery and carrot. Cook for at least two minutes, stirring well, no burns. Let's get some beef up in here. The recipe calls for three quarters of a pound of ground beef chuck. I'm American, so I'm going with a full pound, and we're not quite at the 80% lean, 20% fat beef chuck level, but we're close at 85-15. Make sure you have a higher fat content in your ground beef for this dish. Flavor, folks, trust me. Give it also a good grind of salt and pepper. Don't be bashful. We're waiting for the meat to turn a grayish color to indicate it's cooked. Now add one cup whole milk, but full disclosure, I use almond milk, and I hope no no-nos out there hunt me down for doing so, but we're not fans of cow's milk in this house. By not using whole milk, you definitely lose some richness and creaminess, but you be the judge at the end of this video if you still think the bolognese turned out. For a little kick, add a tiny grating of about 1 8 teaspoon of nutmeg. Stir that in. Time for some wine. We're using about a cup of dry white wine. I picked a dry Riesling from Austria, Hollenberger. Great to drink too. Simmer until the alcohol has evaporated. Once that's done, add one and a half cups of canned Italian plum tomatoes. That's about half of one of those 28 ounce jars. To be honest though, I add a little more since I have a pound of meat. So we'll call it two thirds of a 28 ounce jar for my specific recipe here. That's about two and a quarter cups. And if you're using tomatoes like San Marzano that come whole, make sure to chop them up. Stir everything in. When the tomatoes bubble, turn down the heat. As Marsala Hazan describes, the sauce cooks at the laziest of simmers. I love that phrase. Do that lazy simmer for three hours or more. Make sure to stir about every 10, 15 minutes and add a half a cup of water if it looks like it's starting to dry out and as the fat separates from the meat. But if you want my honest opinion, I think you can get 95% of the way there after only one hour. And I know that may be sacrilegious, but I'm currently nowhere close to three hours and the flavors are already tasting incredible. Don't worry though, we're going the full three plus hours here. While that's cooking, let's see what wine pairing we'll use for this dish. Like I said, I'm American, so I'm taking you all to Sonoma, California, one of the vineyards we visited on our recent trip. Check out that video linked in the episode description. 
This one's from the Imagery Vineyard and it's called Tusca Brava. I thought it would be appropriate for this dish given its big, bold, super Tuscan style. It combines the majority of Sangiovese grapes with Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Cabernet Sauvignon. It's very peppery, tannic. I'm getting tannins on this, are you? Black cherry. I think it's gonna be really good with the bolognese sauce, but it's not a super smooth drinking wine, but then again, it is kind of a super Tuscan type. <laughs> There's chaos going on over here. Now back to the bolognese. Just listen to those sounds. And make sure to taste. A good cook tastes throughout the cooking process. Adjust salt level and seasoning as needed, but of note, a good bolognese requires no herbs. The flavors as they are should be sufficient. More than sufficient. Whatever you do with this recipe, do not, and I mean do not, use a thin noodle like spaghetti. It just won't be the same. I use pappardelle, but a tagliatelle is probably more traditional, uh, and a, even a penne works. You just need a thick noodle to soak up the sauce and also to serve as a vessel for the chunks. Make sure to add a tablespoon of butter and then toss the pasta. When finishing up the sauce after about three hours or more cook time, make sure no water is left from anything that you might have added. Mix in any remaining fat and do a final taste test. Folks, we're ready to plate. You can also add the noodles in with the bolognese and some pasta water in a saute pan. That's pretty nice, but my wife hates it when I use, quote, every dish in the kitchen, end quote, when I cook. So we're simply adding the sauce atop the pasta. This works great too. Important though, do not ruin your pasta with fake Parmesan. You know the green container garbage. Use grated and ideally freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. You've worked hard. Don't ruin your masterpiece. And now for the taste test. Cheers, Dada. Thank you for your four hour bone sauce. Are you gonna cheers me? I think that's a no. <laughs> Sebastian, can I have a cheers? Oh, okay, okay. Let's see. How's it gonna taste? Bolognese sauce is not actually red, right? Not really, I mean, there are a lot of tomatoes, but it's not like the, uh, it's really a meat sauce, that's what, that's how I think of bolognese. No, because you haven't eaten any dinner. The meat was soft and tender, packed with flavor. The vegetables had more or less fused into the sauce, producing a richly satisfying meat-based sauce. This has now become my gold standard recipe for bolognese sauce. Thank you, Marcella Hazan. Goodbye. And although someone wouldn't Goodbye. even try it, All right. he eventually did. I'm throwing it away, Sebastian. Ah! Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more. How do you Salute. take it out? You gotta push it down. Push down. You gotta suck it in. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.